now let us talk about the shape and size of the cells so how large are they or how small are they right what exactly is the size of the cells you know that there are different types of cells right there are organisms that are single cells so their size or there are cells in the multicellular organisms body their size or the size of the plant cell or the animal cell you know so trying to know about their shape and the size of the cells now if i ask you what is that picture in front of you what would you answer what is that it's an amoeba right you've been learning this since ages now what's the shape of this cell the shape of the cell this cell amoeba it's irregular it's not of any shape it's just irregular so even that happens okay there could be cells which do not have any shape now <clears throat> shape and size of cells differ but all of these are ultimately defined by their specific functions so you will find different cells different cells will have different shapes and different sizes they will be of different sizes okay now different cells have different shapes and different sizes for what how and why have they taken up that shape or that size it depends completely upon you know what is their function what function are they going to do what function are they going to perform depending upon that requirement they have achieved that shape or that size for instance let us observe in this diagram that is there in front of you so in this diagram what do you see here you see there's a typical eukaryotic cell a typical eukaryotic cell from a eukaryotic organism so a typical eukaryotic cell the size of a eukaryotic cell is 10 to 20 micrometers I hope you understand how much a micrometer is. If you don't, let me explain you that first. Okay. So let let us understand how much a micrometer is, and then only we'll talk about the size of these cells. Okay. So now you could see there's a pen in my hand, right? There's a pen in my hand. Okay. Say this pen has got a nib, right? There's a white nib that this pen has. Okay. Now you could see the white nib when I contrast it with my coat. Okay. Yeah. So say. the size of the snip is say 1 mm okay the size of this snip is 1 mm okay now this 1 mm nib if i ask you that imagine this nib was a cake okay and i ask you to make 1000 equal squares of that cake okay from this 1 mm nib imagine it was a cake and make 1000 equal squares Okay, and just take one square out of it. That one square is basically one micrometer. Okay, and further, if you are interested to know how much of how much one nanometer is, you've taken this one micrometer, right? Now we know how much one micrometer is, right? Now take this micrometer again. This one micrometer uh, sized uh, piece of cake. Okay, and if I ask you to again. Uh, you know make 1000 equal squares from that 1 micrometer uh, sized a uh, slice of cake and then pick up just one square out of it that much is how much your 1 nanometer is so now we understand how much 1 mm is you know how much 1 mm is right 1 mm is just that single line which is there on the cell okay so from there now you understand the relation between 1 mm 1 micrometer and then from 1 micrometer 1 nanometer okay now let us come back and see uh what are the different sizes of different cells okay and now you can imagine and then i will ask you how many cells can you know settle very easily on the nib of the pen and you'll be able to answer that as well okay so let us see so firstly the typical eukaryotic cell what is the size of a typical eukaryotic cell it is between 10 to 20 micrometer so if it is 10 to 20 micrometer how many can settle on the nib it would be many like in like a double digit right then uh, a typical bacteria the the size of a typical bacteria is like 1 to 2 micrometers 
so are you understanding it one eukaryotic cell size is like from 10 it ranges from 10 to 20 micrometer there is a cell that is even smaller than that that is a uh, cell of a bacteria typical bacteria cell is like 1 to 2 micrometer isn't it the bacterial cell can easily enter into the eukaryotic cell right yes they do and then you have this uh, pplo what is that we will very shortly you know its size is just 0.1 micrometer and then you have viruses the size of viruses is like 0.02 to 0.2 micrometers which is even tinier so some cells can change their shapes like amoeba just like amoeba our white blood cells in our body which are our defense mechanism you know they're part of our defense mechanism in our body they are the fighters they defend us from a lot of diseases the white blood cells that are there in our bodies they can also you know change the shapes just like amoeba they can take any shape so they are just like they don't have a particular shape right uh, but then plant cells and animal cells they do have shape they have almost similar shapes um, animal cell is somewhat kind of a normal cells that you've been studying so far you would say it's ovalish but then when you'll understand then there are n number of animal cells okay and they are of different shapes you will be amazed we had seen the nerve cell which was very different right so plant cells and animal cells are almost similar shapes okay they have kind of almost similar shapes. The smallest cell is the cell of the mycoplasma PPLO, right? Its size is 0.1 as we've seen, 0.1 micrometer. That's really, really small. And the largest cell, the largest cell is the cell of the ostrich egg. 